Hello, ma. I'm just going to go meet my professor. I'll talk to you after that. Okay. May I come in, sir? Come in. Hello, professor. How are you doing? Oh, hello, Doctor Nachiketa. Come, have a seat. How are you doing? Are all your paperwork in the ad block completed? Ah, yes, I am, sir. Perhaps I might vacate the hostel tomorrow evening. Okay. What's the next plan? I haven't thought about it. First, I might go home for a few days. Then I will think about a postdoc or a faculty position somewhere. Very nice. All the very best, man. I don't know, professor. All my thoughts are mixed up. What happened? When I think about it, I'm leaving you and this campus. I don't know what to say. It's been six years since we met, professor. And I don't know how fast the time has flown. It's almost as if we are in a zero gravity world and. Time is moving with the speed of light. I feel like time and gravity are illusions, and everything has happened in a single time lapse. I still remember all the discussions which we had, and all the equations and numbers which we have solved. Now I am only left with memories. I am really going to miss you a lot, Professor. From now on, who will I have to debate every single question I come across? Come, let's go for a walk. Chiketa, all students go through this phase, man. When I was a graduate student, I still remember. I was like you, young, energetic, full of vigor. I remember my advisor, brilliant man, very funny too. I remember he was teaching a quantum mechanics class. He was teaching the basics of vector calculus, the idea of a dot b cross c. A student gets up in class and asks, "The moment I dot a with b, I'm left with a scalar. How do I cross it with c?" Very funny way he says, "Start dotting a with b, just before it turns into a scalar. Cross it with c." <laughs> Very funny man. I think what we need to do is find a place to sit and talk for a little while. How about the stadium? Great. Sir, if you don't mind, I want to ask you a question. It's not technical. It's personal. If you don't mind, can I ask? Sure, man. Go ahead. I have known you for six years. I know how rational you are, and you have always asked me. You always wanted a reason whenever I have asked anything. This question, why, you have asked me an infinite number of times. <laughs> But um, in spite of being so rational and being a theoretical physicist, how come you wear vibhuti every day? How come you believe in God? We have performed so much research on theoretical physics, and we know that the entire universe is governed by the laws of physics. We have tried very hard to derive an equation, a single equation that could describe the entire universe. But uh, what happened in the case of God? 
Did you find the reason to believe in God? Let me ask you a few questions. Why are we here? How did we get here? These questions require the concept of God to come into the picture. We've done all this theoretical work on black holes during your thesis, trying to come up with this grand unifying theory that explains everything about this universe at all scales, like Einstein or Hawking. These black holes are such fascinating objects with infinite gravity where even light can't escape. Do we know enough about them? Do we understand them fully? Theoretically, I can imagine anything, Nachiketa. Let's talk about another thing. These life forms that we see all around us, we believe they started in a primordial soup of amino acids after the Big Bang. Biochemists can explain why that soup. But if we ask how it got there, science can only tell you why it got there. Why only that combination? Another question, why only on Earth? When I was a young boy, I was very, very curious. I wanted to become a scientist. After all these years in the pursuit of science, I've discovered one thing. That science and spirituality lead us to the same goal. Okay, after that? If you think science has a way to disprove God, you're wrong. If you think science has a way to prove God, you're still wrong. God can exist and not exist at the same time. He can be everything and at the same time he can be nothing. He is who you want him to be. What serves your purpose? What gives you meaning to life? What gives you a model to explain love and attachment? That's all you need. I'm a teacher. I see God in teaching, in learning. I see God in the classroom. To me, whatever gives us inner peace, happiness and explain our emotions, explains all the attachments is what God is to me. You asked me about my reasons for being spiritual. I believe in numbers. I believe in theories. I believe in explaining using reason. We use our mind to reason and answer difficult questions. As we keep reasoning out these answers, our collective curiosity is pushing these boundaries of science day in and day out. You ask this question, why? You reach a point where science, even today, is unable to answer it anymore. But that boundary is being pushed every day by our collective curiosity, by all the scientists in the world. That's where I believe, if we keep going down this path, both science and spirituality will take us to the same goal. That's why to me it's important to be spiritual while being in the pursuit of science. I think, I believe they will reach the same goal eventually. And that goal is inner happiness. Whatever explains the life around you and your emotional attachment to it. Whatever explains the world to you is where this pursuit should end. That's where it will end. Professor, it's your phone.
Hello. Oh yeah. Sure. I have to leave. We had planned dinner this evening. I guess your wife has been waiting for you for a while. Why don't you join us? No, thank you. I think you should carry on. Our collective curiosity is pushing these boundaries of science. Whatever explains the life around you and your emotional attachment to it, whatever explains the world to you, is where this pursuit should end. That's where it will end.